Okay, so a little bit about this project. We've been tasked to generate basically a little bit of a loop road here. We're going to tie into this intersection or this road here, and we're going to come around the building and tie into an existing road on the back side so that they can develop this area here and start to develop this area on the outside of that road. So what we're going to do is generate a component road, and then we're going to bring that component road into Civil 3D 2019, and at import, with the new functionality of being able to generate a corridor from a component road, we're going to be able to see a corridor that has been automatically generated at import using simple sub-assemblies and assemblies. We can then take and add our custom sub-assemblies to either the existing assemblies, or we could actually change out the assemblies totally and update our corridor from that. Now, first off though, we're gonna start with building a component road. So I'm gonna pick component roads and I'm gonna add an assembly type of two lanes. All right, and I'm gonna start drawing in my component road. So I'll just draw it in by PI. And I'll connect it to my existing road. All right, now once we've got it drawn in, then there's a couple things I want to change. So I want to make sure that there's curves at each PI. So I'm going to select my PI here. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to create a curve out of that PI. All right, go to the next curve, right click and add a curve into the alignment. All right, and then I'll go to the next PI and I will add a curve. Now again, we can adjust the lengths of these curves, and if they do overlap, it will not allow us to adjust it. All right, so I could select this one. I could make it 150 meters long, which would tighten it up a little bit, definitely changing the geometry of that curve. And we could go to the next one, and I could say maybe that one's 75. I want to add another piece to this road. So I want to add basically a, a widening lane to where we have three lanes or two lanes on, the, the south side of the road all the way around. So I'm going to select my component road again, and I'm just going to add or insert a road component. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my lane. I'm just going to add another lane. All right, and I'm going to double click here in my model on the south side of the road, and it's going to add the lane. All right, now I can do a couple things here. Um, I can leave this transition here if I'd like. And I can select the ending grip marker and tell it I want to align to the end of the road. All right, we're going to change the width of all of these lanes so that we can kind of keep track of that. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it that this is four meters wide, each lane. So that's got the widening road. I'll go ahead and change uh, the other two that came in when I originally laid out my component road. I'll select the north lane, all right? And then I wanna set the transition on my actual, my, my lane widening here. So this is set to 10 meters, so I can actually select that grip marker there at the end of the transition. I can tell it I want that to be 30 meters. And it will widen that transition out for me. All right, let's look at the other end of the road real quick. All right, and I can select that grip marker, and I actually want to pull that back. All right, I'll select it again, right click and tell it I want to create a transition out. This is going to give us a different transition so that we can transition back to our original lane. So I'll go ahead and, and uh, change the transition length here to 30 meters. All right, now we've got our horizontal laid out the way we want. And now I want to kind of take a look at the vertical. So I'm going to turn it on its side here. And first thing I want to do is change my grading limit. All right, so I want to change that to 100 meters. All right, so that it does go ahead and daylight on all sides. All right, that should be plenty far for it to daylight. If you need to have more, you can tell it, you know, give it more uh, grading limit. All right, now I want to go ahead and take a look at the profile view real quick and we can start to adjust. Now I'm doing this so that I can show you whenever we bring this into Civil 3D it's also going to bring the alignment and the profile information also. So any adjustments that I make here in my profile view it's going to carry those across. 
So I can go ahead and make these adjustments beforehand, before getting to Civil 3D, and it might save me a little work. So I'm just adding, adding some PVIs, all right, into my vertical alignment. All right, and I'll grab that and move it up. That's going to give me some fill in that area, so I might actually want to pull that down just a little bit more. All right, and we've got one more I'm going to put in right down here. I'll add this PVI here. And we will pull this down so that we don't have as much fill here. Now, once this comes into Civil 3D, we'll have complete editability of all of this that we've just adjusted inside of InfraWorks. So let's go ahead and open up Civil 3D and take a look at our component row that it generates for us in Civil 3D 2019. So I'm inside here in Civil 3D 2019. And the first thing we need to do, I've got an open brand new drawing here. I need to go ahead and set my coordinate system to what is needed. So I'm going to select my drawing name and settings and edit the drawing settings. I'm going to go down to Missouri State Plain Central Zone Meter. I'll hit apply and OK. Now after we set our coordinate system we're going to go ahead and select open model here in the Inf Autodesk InfraWorks tab in our ribbon and I'll connect to my model. Now we need to drill down to where the model is stored on our local machine. So I'm under Documents, Autodesk InfraWorks Models, and it's down here at the bottom. We'll select our model, go ahead and open it up, and it'll read the coordinate systems between the InfraWorks model and our Civil 3D drawing. Once it's read in the coordinate system, so I don't want to bring in the entire model, so I'm going to zoom in to just an area of interest. So I'll select area of interest and hit select area. And I'll scroll in to where my component road was. You can see right here is the intersection where we tied into our existing road, and it turns and ties back to this existing road here. So I'll just pick this area right here. Once the area has been selected, I'm going to refine the selection set that it's going to pull in, because I don't need the planning roads um, or all of the surfaces here. So I'm just going to collapse my tree here and I'm going to take a check mark out of, out of planning roads. I do want my component roads and my intersections and the intersections are still not going to come in exactly the way we would expect. Uh, that's still a work in progress but it does bring in something for the intersections but the component road that I'm concerned with is 569. Uh, that's the designation that InfraWorks gave it and I also want to bring in the existing ground. Now you can see that it is automatically going to bring in that InfraWorks existing ground right there. All right, I'll hit OK, and I'll hit Open Model, and it'll bring those entities into Civil 3D. All right, so I can zoom in. I'll go ahead and turn off my map. I can zoom in, and I can see my corridor, and um, I can see the widths of my road look correct. I can actually go to my assemblies. If I zoom to my assemblies here, I can see how the assemblies are made. So the, the, the top two are going to be the assemblies that it tried to generate for the intersections. Those are not the ones that we're concerned with. I'm concerned with these here below. So the two lane and then the lanes with the or the two lane with the additional where we made the uh, lane widening. If I just pick one of these sub assemblies, I can select it and open up the sub assembly properties and see that it carries that four meter width that I applied in InfraWorks across into Civil 3D. Now, if I wanted to change out any of the assemblies, all right, this is uh, this corridor is no different than any other corridor that's generated by Civil 3D. So I can actually go in and change out the assemblies that are the sub assemblies inside of each assembly that it's using to generate this. So just so I can kind of show you a little bit about that, I'll go ahead and open up my tool palette, and I want another. I want to add. A, a different lane here instead of just a basic lane. So what I'll do is expand my tool palette here and I'll go to lanes and I'm just going to erase that lane and I'm going to add a lane super elevation AOR. Now my width on the lane I need it to be four meters so I'm going to go ahead and select four there in my in my properties and I'll add that lane in. All right now I can then just grab my daylighting subassembly and I can move it to the edge of that lane. All right. All the while, every change that we make here, it's going to be wanting to update our corridor. 
So I can look here and you can see that that 569 corridor needs to be updated. So I can zoom back, go back to the corridor here and just right click and rebuild. And it'll rebuild using that lane. Now notice what happened. It took away the daylighting on the south side of the road here. So in order to get that back, I just need to go back into the corridor properties and set all targets to that particular existing ground surface. And it will daylight again. Now, I could add a curb, I could add another lane, I could add whatever I want to this particular corridor, and it would reflect that from the assemblies into the corridor. Now, also coming in from InfraWorks, if I wanted to change the vertical design on this, we actually adjusted the vertical design inside of InfraWorks, but we could adjust it more here in Civil 3D. We could change it up totally. If we go up to Profile and create a surface profile and pick that 569 alignment, then once that alignment is selected, you can see that it has this InfraWorks surface and it has the 569 profile, which is our proposed grade. So I can just hit Draw and Profile View here, select my profile view I want to to show and I'll just go ahead and hit create profile and stick that profile out here now you can see the red line designates the existing surface and our finished grade profile looks like it was expected to look so we could right click on that and tell it we wanted to add labels we just simply import a label set hit OK and it adds our labels alright we could uh, if we wanted to change the geometry we could grab that vertical profile again, we could grip edit things, or we can go up into the panorama and we can change the curve lengths here. So I could say, you know, I want that to be a 50 meter curve. These 10 meter curves, that's not big enough. Let's make them 100 meter curves. And we'll do it again. All right. So you can see it updates those as we drop down through the vertical information. All right, and all of this is dynamic as it's expected. So very quickly, we can take a component road from InfraWorks and we can bring it directly into Civil 3D and continue with our proposed design.